Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, we're going to talk about some of the true causes of fibroids. Now, the reason why this conversation is so important is because before I decided to do this video, um, I wanted to kind of scour the internet and see what was already out there and uh, going on YouTube, going on Google, and I can see why so many women are frustrated with this. I get DMs, uh, inboxes, emails all the time asking about this condition, fibroids. And based upon what's out there, I can see why people are confused. I can see why people are frustrated because the solutions that are out there, especially when it pertains to modern medicine, are not only inadequate, but they're also, um, in some cases, actually detrimental. Um, when you think about what's available for most women, it is pain pills, uh, birth control pills, and surgery. That is really it. That is the only thing that is offered when it really comes, comes down to uh, fibroids. And the other reason I think this conversation is so important as well is because 80% of women throughout their lifetime will actually be affected by fibroids. Now think about that. If we're in a room of 100 women, 80 of them will have fibroids at some point in their journey. That is staggering. And this is the unfortunate part of it. It has become so common that now it's perceived as normal. And that's one of the things that I really hate about our medical system is that we take something that is very not normal to the body and we make it common and we brush it off and we tell people that they should just deal with the symptoms or deal with whatever they have as a solution for it without actually making the effort to, de to decipher what is the cause of this, the true cause. Because if you can't get to the cause, you can't get to the solution. And addressing the symptoms that does not address the cause. And I'm not, I'm not saying that there isn't any, any value in addressing the symptoms because when I tell you, I know women struggle with this and they struggle mightily. Um, I know that there's value in addressing the symptoms, but the unfortunate thing is as you have a condition like fibroids, your chances for uh, a normal childbirth go down significantly. Um, your day-to-day -day lifestyle uh, suffers as a result too. And so, you know, I think when we make something normal, that is just common, but it's not normal, what we do is we say deal with the symptoms. And what we also say is, is, is that it's not valuable to actually address the symptoms and put the work in to address the cause. And so that's why I wanted to put this video in today. And I thought it was so important for that reason, okay? Um, the other thing that I think is really important to mention before we get started is that this isn't a condition about, you know, black and white or young and old. It affects women in their teens and it affects women even into their 40s. So it's important to know and understand that this isn't just a condition about age. It's not a condition about, you know, race either, even though it disproportionately affects uh, African-American women. But what's really important for us to know and understand is that, you know, this is affecting all women. So and what that means is I want you to think about men and women. Think about your daughters. Think about, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, your mom your aunties, think about all of them when I'm having this conversation because I know we're just a few minutes into this video, but I want men to be aware of this as well too because we have to be able to support our women when it comes to this, okay? So without any further ado, let's kind of get started. Let's first start with what is a fibroid, okay? A fibroid is a non-cancerous tumor that develops in the muscle tissue in the uterus okay? That is the womb of the woman. These sort of like cyst-like, um, you know, um, tumors develop in the uterus. Um, and the reason why that's so important is because, you know, this will affect uh, the ability to have children and fertility, okay? So that's hugely important from that standpoint, but it's also hugely important from a lifestyle standpoint because of these potential symptoms that are quite often um, not only underdiagnosed 
or overlooked, um, but quite often some of the symptoms uh, are never actually looked at as symptoms of fibroids, okay? And some women are actually asymptomatic. They never know they have fibroids because they don't understand what the symptoms are. Some of, so some of those symptoms could be things like heavier and longer periods, okay? So heavier and longer periods. So when you think about today, um, you know, a painful menstrual cycle, when you, when you see commercials and hear conversations, a painful menstrual cycle has become, again, something that is deemed as normal, but because it is common. But again, just because something is very common doesn't mean that it's normal, okay? So a heavy and longer period, okay? Also, anemia, okay? And the anemia is coming because of that heavier period. You're losing a lot of blood throughout the month. I've worked with women who unfortunately have you know, have such heavy periods that they literally have to sleep um, with a depends on, okay? So think about that. And then the, the range of that is always different. You know, you'll have somebody who has fibroids and they won't have heavy periods. You'll have somebody who does and they'll have heavy periods. So it's important to know and understand. It can vary, but quite often it is associated with heavier and longer periods. And what I want any woman out there who's done my detox, comment below. Uh, what you'll notice is when you do my detox, I've seen women who have periods that have been up upwards of 13 days in a month. And um, they do the detox and all of a sudden they notice that all of a sudden their period went from 13, five, uh, eight days, 10 days. Now it's down to three or four days. Okay. And that's significant when it when you think about um, the impact on lifestyle and the impact on overall comfortability throughout the day, their daily lives. So uh, comment below if you've done my detox and you've noticed that your, pe your period was significantly reduced as a result of doing the detox. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is it's important to know and understand I, a, a woman's cycle has a purpose. And part of that purpose is to cleanse the wound, okay? And so this is why a detox can play a huge part when it comes to um, that healing process of the wound as well too, because it helps with that detoxification and that cleansing process, okay? To get impurities out of the wound. So that's why I bring that up. Another one of the symptoms that women will quite often experience while having fibroids is passage of blood clots during a, their cycle. Okay, again, this may be something that is deemed as normal because it's common, okay? But it's really important to know and understand that the blood only clots when there's an issue, okay? Or it's trying to fix an issue, okay? It is not a normal thing to have clots during a period. So, it's important to know that there could be a sign and symptom that you have fibroids, especially for my women out there who possibly have them but are asymptomatic because they don't understand what the symptoms are or they're not being told by their physician that this could be a, a possible symptom and then doing the follow-up evaluation, okay? Also, pain upon intercourse. If uh, during intercourse, you're having a painful experience just simply by having intercourse it could possibly be as a result of having fibroids as well too because you got to remember these are non-cancerous tumors that are developing in the muscle of the uterus okay so uh, that could be the cause of the pain because they're inflamed okay and they're also bleeding okay and then also painful and as i mentioned before painful and sometimes debilitating um, menstrual cycles, okay? Again, I know it's common, but it doesn't mean that it's normal. Um, and for a lot of women, they have to deal with this pretty much all throughout their lives, okay? And I'll explain why in just a second, but a lot of women have to deal with this throughout their lives. It starts with their first period and it literally ends with their last period, okay? So just imagine a girl gets a period at 12 years old and her first period is painful and she goes into her 40s until she hits, you know, um, premenopause. 
and sometimes even during premenopause and you know until she loses her cycle uh it is completely painful just so just imagine having to deal with that once a month every year for over 40 years okay that's pretty tough okay and so um, that is definitely a telltale sign if you're consistently having those debilitating and often painful menstrual cycles. So those are just some of the signs and symptoms. And what we're going to get into is, you know, these are signs and symptoms, but also causes. OK. All right. And the reason why I want to lump them together is because these are also telltale signs to help you to understand how how first to evaluate yourself so then you can educate your doctor on hey i want to get an ultrasound i want to get this to determine whether or not i have small fibroids before they become huge fibroids okay and you can make an adjustment in your lifestyle while they're small before they become huge okay because again if they're small more than likely they're never going to they're not going to do the surgery you know and so they're literally going to wait until you're in a state where it's painful, you've been struggling. And then at that point, finally, they offer the surgery. But what they don't tell you is all of the side effects of the surgery, okay? The potential side effects. So it's really important that you get in a, a, a mindset of being your own first physician for yourself first. Because you got to think about it. At the end of the day, your doctor really can't evaluate you without your opinion. That's why when you come in, they're asking you questions. Tell me about your cycle. How long is it? How heavy is it? You know, tell, is your cycle painful? How long have you been experiencing this? Are you on any medications? They literally have to go like ask you questions first. So if you are in a better position to understand your body first, then you can do the first evaluation and you pretty much in many cases can direct them on uh, helping you sort of navigate this space before it's too late, okay? And what I mean by too late, before it's painful, before it's uh, the tumors are, are huge and that sort of thing. So let's get into these not only signs, but causes of, you know, um, you know, fibroids, okay? So number one, early menses, okay? When you get your period, super early and what i mean by early like i'm starting to see young girls who are nine years old getting a period now let me give you just some juxtaposition because as i've been saying throughout this video sometimes because something becomes so common we think that it's normal but if you look at some of the history and look at what what age were girls getting their periods let's say for instance in the 1800s Many, the average for most girls getting their periods in the 1800s was somewhere around 15 and 16 years old, okay? That doesn't sound normal at all. I mean, but when you think about it back in, back in those times, you know, you could be 16 or 17 years old and just getting your period, okay? That sounds crazy today. You know, it doesn't sound common at all. But guess what? It was normal then when we didn't have so much hormonal imbalance in the environment, in our food, um, essentially in all of our, you know, cosmetic and um, hygienic products and hair, hair, hair products, skincare products um, were being attacked at so many, um, you know, aspects. So it's important to know that early menses, getting your period super early is a sign and symptom that you will potentially uh, develop um, fibroids down the line. So when your daughter does get these conditions, that's when you want to go on the, the offensive and, de and defensive and start to figure out how to stay away from endoc endocrine disrupting uh, chemicals, how to stay away from hormone filled foods, how to stay away from certain pesticides that also disrupt the hormonal imbalance as well too. So Early menses is a sign and symptom. So for men, women out there who have daughters, if your daughter gets that early period, it means that the imbalance has already started. Okay, so you want to make changes and shift in the lifestyle there. That's the most important thing. Or if you're looking back retrospect, re retrospectively, that could be looking back and thinking, thinking to yourself like, 
oh my goodness, like I did get an early period. I got my period when I was like 10 years old and it was painful, okay? So that was the first sign and symptom to show you that you were on that path, you know? So you can even look back retrospectively and think about that as well, which leads me to quite often when girls are getting periods early, often they are often, you know, painful as well. And there's hormonal imbalance, so they have a lot of acne. And what do you? What happens when you go to your doctor and you tell them your daughter has a painful period, it came early, and now she has acne? What do they do? They put you on birth control pills. They put you on birth control pills. Now, what I want you to think about is this. They put you on birth control pill because A, they say it helps with the acne. And then B, it'll help with the heavy flow when it comes to the period, okay? The heavy bleeding. But what they don't tell you is this about birth control pills. It may indeed help with the flow. It may indeed help with the acne. But what they don't tell you is that it grows fibroids, okay? It will grow fibroids. Now, what I want you to put in perspective is this for just a second. You start, and let's give it just a scenario. My future daughter, your daughter, you start your period at 10 years old, okay? By 11, you, you start taking birth control to get rid of this acne and to get rid of the painful periods that are keeping you out of school, that are keeping you from being able to function like a young, young lady, all right? So you start that at 11 years old, all right? You continue to take that throughout high school, okay? You continue to take that in college, and then you continue to take that as an adult. I have seen women who have been on birth control for over 20 years and it became so common and normal because the doctor gave it to them so early in life and they got so used to taking that pill. What they didn't understand was, A, yes, it reduced the, it, it potentially reduced uh, the bleeding uh, as a result of the already imbalance that was already in already there it had already started okay uh so it, it can reduce the flow it can reduce the acne but that whole time it has been growing that tumor bigger and bigger and bigger okay and the reason why that happens is and this is the important part you have to understand that our bodies are a my our bodies is the 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 perfect pharmacy all the the pharmaceuticals that are created outside of our bodies our bodies create that inside of itself too. So our bodies create its own estrogen. It creates its own progesterone, okay? And now you're adding a synthetic version of it to your body, okay? Now, initially when they came out with um, birth control in the late 50s and then moving into the 60s and 70s where it became popular, initially when they uh, created birth control, they use a natural product, a uh, natural uh, remedy called wild yam, okay? And um, the unfortunate thing is they moved away from that because that is unprofitable. You know, when you make a synthetic version of something, you can patent it. And when you can patent anything, you can make millions off of it. Whereas when you can take a natural form of something, first of all, any herbalist can do that. So you can just go down the street to your herbalist and second of all, the unfortunate thing is that there's going to be limitations with producing the crop as well, too. Whereas when you make a synthetic version that is man-made, you can multiply and reproduce that. But the unfortunate thing is real recognizes real. And so although they're creating these synthetic versions of estrogen primarily and progesterone, uh, i.e. birth control, what your body, you have to understand that your body already has a symphony. And that symphony was disrupted by a lifestyle that included stress, that included nutrition, that included uh, household and cosmetic and hygienic products and other things, even uh, trauma as well too. And so it's important for us to know and understand when you add this synthetic version of estrogen to your body, it's important for you to know and understand. Yes, it may help with the bleeding. Yes, it may help with the acne. But that excess estrogen that is being added to the body will grow the tumor, okay? And how do I know that? Most women, I want you to think about this because most of us know somebody, unfortunately, who has breast cancers, which millions of women suffer with. 
But here's the crazy thing. One of the first things they do whenever a woman gets breast cancer is they take her off hormone therapy. They remove birth control, they remove any hormone therapy. So that tells you something. They know that this birth control grows tumors, whether they be non-cancerous tumors like fibroids or cancerous tumors like breast cancer. Okay, so it's important to know and understand when it comes to birth control, you're addressing the symptoms, but not the cause. And quite often, when you're only addressing the symptoms, you could be contributing to the cause, which could be the case definitely with birth control. So it's hugely important that we know and understand that. I know I spent a lot of time on birth control, but uh, it is it is huge in the population of how many women actually take birth control. So I think it's important that I sort of dive a little bit deeper in that. So birth control pills also could be a cause as well, too. And this is why we're seeing young women as early in their teens getting fibroids, okay? And I think it's so important we're having this conversation together. So please comment below if this is helping you, guiding you, and giving you a little bit of understanding, okay? So number three, cause, high-carb diet, eating a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of sugar. And the reason why that's so important is because the more sugar you have in your body, it will increase insulin, okay? Insulin tells your body to grow, okay? Specifically, it's a, it tells the body to store fat and create fat, but it also tells tumors to grow as well, too. So a high-carb sugar diet, and when I say high-carb, I'm not only talking about sugar in the form of the granulated sugar that you pour into a sugary beverage or you pour into virtually every product that you see on a shelf in a grocery store, I'm also talking about pastas, breads, grains, those as well too, because when you look at our diets, we eat so much processed and refined carbohydrates and those processed refined carbohydrates turn into sugar in the body. And as you increase sugar, you're going to increase insulin. Okay, so that's number three. Number four, high insulin. Okay, so you eat a lot of refined carbohydrates, a lot of sugar, which we eat about 152 pounds of sugar every year compared to one to five pounds in the 1800s. Okay, so that's pretty significant. That's going to raise your insulin levels. When your insulin levels are very, very high, it is going to, it is going to change the physiology of your body. Okay, not only biochemically, but even, you know, uh, from a hormone standpoint and also from a physical physical standpoint as well too. So one of the things that insulin does is it triggers the body to store fat, okay? And fat creates more estrogen because more the more body fat you have on your body, it creates this enzyme called aromatase. And aromatase creates more estrogen, not only in women, but even in men as well too. And men, it will take a man's testosterone and convert it into estrogen. Okay, so that's one thing that insulin would do to the body. Also, it signals the fibroids to grow. Okay, so high insulin levels will trigger the fibroid to actually grow bigger. Okay, which is hugely important. Also, once your body gets into a state where it's had so much insulin for so long, it will become insulin resistant. And here's where that really comes into play. Insulin resistant will lower sex hormone binding globulin. And the reason why that's so important, when it starts to lower sex hormone bind, binding globulin, your body will start dumping estrogen into this, the system. And as I said before, estrogen will cause the growth of both non-cancerous tumors, fibroids, and even cancerous tumors, okay? Breast cancer, okay? Cervical cancer, etc. So it's hugely important. That's a huge, like, if, if I had to say one big cause, that's definitely one of the biggest causes, okay? High carb diet, lots of sugar that triggers more insulin in the body. Number five, obesity. And I just mentioned this, but the more body fat you have on your body, fat isn't just this fat. It's not just sitting there, okay? It's changing your hormones in your body. It's changing the amount of toxicity in your body as well, too. It's changing a lot of things. And as I said before, the more fat you have on your body, you're going to create more aromatase and more aromatase is going to increase estrogen levels, okay? And even 
the fat is also going to lower vitamin D, which also uh, a vitamin D deficiency has also been associated with more fibroids, okay? And that's very true in the African-American uh, community, okay? So hugely important for that reason as well. And then the other thing is causes uh, xenoestrogens, these fake estrogens that I mentioned before. And these fake estrogens are quite often in processed foods. These fake estrogens are also in plastics. Um, these fake estrogens are also in household and cosmetic products as well, hygienic products, shampoos, lotions, etc. Okay, so a, a few examples. BPA, which you quite often find in plastics. And a lot of people will say, well, I'll make sure I get the BPA-free plastic. Well, these companies are, when I tell you they are evil geniuses, they take bpa remove that and create another compound called bpf and bps and guess what it does the same thing and they'll call it bpa free which it is because now it has bps and f okay so bpa atrazine atrazine you're going to find in most um it is the second most popular pesticide used in the u.s okay and atrazine is an endocrine disruptor, it creates more estrogen in the body. And I told you, more estrogen in the body causes tumors to grow, okay? Both benign and malignant, okay? So atrazine, phthalates, you'll also see that when you're reading labels. PL, uh, PFOAs and also PFASs as well too. So PFAS and uh, as well, these are forever chemicals. They call them forever chemicals because when they get in your body, they're there forever, okay? This is why it's so important to understand that some of these can be removed um, by herbal detoxing. This is one of the bene another benefit of doing my detox because herbs not only get, get rid of waste out of the gut, okay? And that's a whole nother conversation how that ties into the whole fibroid conversation, but it gets rid of heavy metals. And it also gets rid of a lot of this toxicity. As a matter of fact, there are many plants in nature. As I'm, I'll give you an example, dandelions and other plants. What happened in Japan when they had that nuclear explosion in Fukushima, they planted all of these plants that were known for sucking up toxins, okay? So that at some point down the line that they could repopulate an area. So it's important for us to know and understand, even though modern medicine doesn't understand nature, so they can't, they don't give you recommendations about herbs. It's important to know and understand nature knows itself, okay? And those who understand nature understand how nature not only can help by healing the body, but even in nature, you can plant a certain kind of plant and it'll pull toxicity as, as bad as radioactive toxicity out of the earth, okay? So this is why it's so important to, for, to do detoxing and cleansing as well too, because some of these are forever chemicals because they stay in your body forever, okay? And a lot of these um, PF, PFOAs and PFAS, uh, these are in things like, you know, those Teflon nonstick plants. Yeah, they're in those type of things, okay? There's a, a documentary that, or a movie that you should watch. It's called Dark Waters. It's all about that conversation how 3,500 people had cancer in a town in West Virginia as a result of the company DuPont putting these forever chemicals in the natural water, putting them in the environment. And they, the town sued DuPont for over $70 million in one. Okay, so these aren't things that I'm making up. Like these are real things that we know affect people but you'll go into the supermarket or go into the store and you can buy a Teflon pan that still has these chemicals in it, okay? The other thing is flame retardants that they put in mattresses and even dioxins. So these are xenoestrogens or endocrine disrupting uh, chemicals that also affect the body and cause fibroids as well too. And these are also in a lot of the hair care products as well too. Number seven, stress, too much stress. When you stress, you create cortisol. When you create cortisol, this causes your body to say, A, 
store fat. Cortisol tells the body to store fat, and I've told you, the more fat you have on your body, the more estrogen you're going to have in your body. But also, the, uh, the more cortisol you have in your body, you will produce much less progesterone as well, too. And progesterone is the good hormone. You want more of that. Okay, but a lot of women suffer from low progesterone levels because testosterone is everywhere. It's coming in the body from everywhere. And so the more stressed you are, the more cortisol you produce, this will lower the amount of progesterone in the body. And this will ultimately lead to increased amounts of estrogen. Okay, so you can kind of see how that works. You stress too much. And uh, that leads to you producing more cortisol, more cortisol, lower progesterone, less progesterone increases the concentration of estrogen in the body, which is hugely important. And it's really important to know that progesterone is a natural antidepressant. OK, so when you have low, lower levels of progesterone, you're going to naturally be depressed because you took away your natural antidepressant. As I said before, our bodies is the real pharmacy, you know, with a F, not a PH pharmacy, but a F pharmacy. Our bodies are the real pharmacy, okay? We just have to get our bodies balanced, okay? And number eight, estrogen dominance. I know I've been mentioning estrogen a lot, but what you'll notice is um, with women who, are, who have fibroids, who have breast cancer, their body is in a state of estrogen dominance. The, the estrogen levels are very high. And we see this not only in women, but we see this in men. And whenever you have estrogen dominance in the body, it's not only going to change the body physically, but it's going to change the body physiologically as well, too. And then the other thing I, I wanted to bring up, which I think is really important, is doing the spiritual work. Um, unresolved trauma can also lead to fibroids as well, too. And I know that there's no studies to quote this. Um, but there are studies that show that women who go through sexual abuse, molestation, um, it is studies that quote, those women are more likely to have reproductive issues. Those women are more likely to have things like fibroids. And so doing the therapy and finding a therapist to do uh, the work when it comes to resolving these unresolved traumas and dramas that occur both in men and women's life uh, but doing the work to resolve these traumas is hugely important, too, when it comes to the healing process as well, too. And then my bonus for today is lack of exercise. When you don't exercise, you can't build muscle. If you can't build muscle and you're, you're living a sedentary lifestyle, you're going to produce more fat on the body as well, too. And not only that, when you're sitting down in this seated position for long bouts throughout the day, your body is constantly in a position where it's flexed. Your knees are bent. Your bodies are often hunched over. We're getting tech neck by actually reading our phones all throughout the day. And so we're literally compressing our gut on top of our reproductive organs as well, too. So it's not just from a, you know, a lack of activity uh, aspect, but because we're living these sedentary lifestyles when it comes to work, today too that is a huge factor as well too thanks for watching this video but be sure to check the next video out that's right here but everything i talk about is how do we take a holistic and natural approach to healing other than a man-made approach and also how do we prevent dis-ease in the body as well too because you know they say